Self-Study of Clinical Looking Glass, Tutorial 9. Identify patients who die in hospital by one of two methods, either by using the attribute on the event definition canvas or using a when in condition line on event canvas. To develop deeper insight into cohort building, read Riddles in Accountable Healthcare by Aaron Bellin, available on Amazon, either as paperback or Kindle. Let's go back into Clinical Looking Glass. And let's take a look at the event canvas. As you recall, in our last study, we built a patient cohort with congestive heart failure in March 2012. Let's edit that and consider for a moment how do we identify those patients who actually died during that admission? That is, we want to find the number of patients who actually died during a CHF admission in March of 2012. Well, one way we might do it is we might say, well, the admission itself might have an attribute that tells us that the patient died during the admission. That is, you know, the disposition attribute might be the one that could be used to say this patient left alive or left dead. But if you didn't know to begin with what attribute of the admission event might be useful, you should go to the help section, the manuals, and then go to the event definition manual. And when you open that up, and I would suggest you save this to your computer as I have, a nice table of contents, which you can go through, and I suggest you do, because it tells you about all the different events that exist in Looking Glass. Hospital admissions and discharges, births and death, outpatient visit, how the emergency department is represented in events, ED discharge, ED scene, ED triage, how procedures are actually recorded in the looking glass as a procedure event, and there's a CPT4 procedure date, that is an event that's in the outpatient or billed differently. Here's a surgery event. It's useful to go through the table of contents, but let's go directly to the hospital admission discharge and take a look and see what are the attributes. First, it tells you the nature of the time quality of the event, as you can imagine, and as you know from my book, an inpatient admission is a durational event, so it has both a start date and an end date, an admit date and a discharge date. It has a medical record number associated with it, has an event ID associated with it. Each admission has an admit attending, an admit house staff, a discharge attending, a discharge house staff, a nursing station that you're admitted to, a discharge nursing station, so if you want to do evaluations of care at the moment of admission or at the moment of discharge, you have that capacity. Admit priority. The referral agency, is it from a nursing home, is it from another hospital? The DRG, the DRG weight, these are all attributes, and you can select patients and select cohorts based on them. And here's disposition. And you find things like eloped, expired, went on a home IV, went to a hospice. So if you're trying to find out which events you have and which event types, which events you have and which events attributes you can choose from, this manual is particularly useful for you. Let's go back to Looking Glass. And now we're going to edit the CHF line. We're going to go into the event type. We're going to modify it, modify the event definition. And I'm going to say CHF admission death. I'm going to rename it here. I'm going to hover over definition because I'm going to add a new condition line here. The additional condition I'm going to have is going to be that disposition 
is equal to expired. Update and close. Now populate, it'll populate this incomplete event definition line. Notice it's expired. I've renamed the definition of the event. Update and close. It fills the event definition here. Renaming the CHF death. And when I update and close, it will populate this condition line. So update and close, and we see CHF admission death. Now I want to save this, but I don't want to overwrite my original study. So I choose Save As, and I name it CHF March 2012 death. Now I build. You see in the management pane another cohort is built, and you find that in March 2012 there were 34 patients who died and also had as a diagnosis, either in a primary or secondary position, CHF. So this is one simple way of doing it. You look toward the admission, you say the admission has an attribute, which you're saying is disposition equal to expire. You add that attribute into the condition line for the event definition, and you're done. Similarly, you may want to have patients who have not expired. So you could have chosen to say not expired, and then you'd have all the patients who did not expire. Now why might you want to have a not expired patient? Well, if you're looking at readmissions, you must make sure that the patient's index admission did not result in death, because dead people can't be readmitted. And you'll actually have a problem very soon that I will give you that you'll be required to create cohorts to be used for readmissions. And you must make sure that on the original hospitalization, they did not die. Notice it's yellow here. We're just going to leave this. Yes, we're going to close the edit mode. And it's green. Now let's look at a different way, another way of achieving the same result. Let's once again edit the original cohort. Remember, this is just the people who had an admission with CHF. And now we want to add another condition on the event canvas itself. And I'm going to call this CHF March 2012 death using when in. So far, you've learned about when in as an operator that localizes the event in a calendar time span, so when in March 2012. You also learned from the diabetic example that we have another useful temporal operator, within, that says an event happened within 180 to 365 days. But there's another use of when in. When in, as a temporal operator, can point to another event and say, I want to make sure that this new event occurs during this other event. I want to make sure that the death occurred when in the hospital admission. I want to make sure the echocardiogram occurred when in the hospital admission. I want to make sure the creatinine is the last creatinine the patient had when in the hospitalization. The when in operator is extraordinarily powerful and is unique to looking glass. So we hover over the index event line. I right click and I add a condition. And this time the condition is when in. The event, the event type is going to be death. We're going to look for the earliest death. It really makes no difference because death happens only once, except in theological contexts. And we're going to look for a new event that represents death. So let's see what events we have that could be death. Let's select here. Actually, there are a number of them. There's death in house, that is, they died in the hospital. There's death according to Social Security. And there's death either by the Social Security death tapes or in house. 
We'll take a few moments here to talk about death. If you choose death in-house, in the past three years, we actually have information of the death certificates as an attribute. So you can actually see those death certificate results for those who die in-house at Montefiore. If you look only at Social Security death tapes, this used to be a very efficient way to pick up death, both at Montefiore and outside. About 94% of the deaths in the United States could be picked up that way. Unfortunately, November 2011, Social Security de-enriched its data tapes. Since we had the old and new tapes, we were able to check that, and we saw that 50% of the death were taken out. I'm not going to get into why that happened, but it just did. The most useful way to find death now is Social Security, death, or in-house. That is, either they died at Montefiore, or we have information from outside. This is the best information we have about death. I would just warn you that if you're doing an analysis that crosses the threshold of November of 2011, you better be very careful about that secular trend. On either side, it's going to be the same, but across it, there'll be a difference. Anyway, we're going to have the event type as death, and now we're going to we're going to populate this event definition. We're going to populate this new event definition by update and close. And there's death. Now, the duration definition. If we choose new duration definition as we did before, this will ask us for a calendar date. That's not what we're interested in. If we choose select, this lets you use a previously chosen calendar date, in this case March 2012, and it links this line's March 2012 with the previous line, so that if you change the previous line, this one changes automatically. If you choose copy, this will make an instantaneous copy of what March 2012 is, and if you subsequently change the first line's March 2012, it'll have no impact on this one. But the really interesting selection is this one, Select System Duration. What this does is it says, okay, what other event types do we have on this canvas? Which of those event types actually are durational in nature, that have a start and end date? Think of it. Hospitalizations, that is inpatient admissions or discharge, have a start or stop. Transfers to floors have a start and stop. ED visits, from ED triage to ED discharge has a start and a stop. So if there is a durational event, you can compel the event of this, this condition line to occur during the durational event on the event canvas. So we're going to choose CHF and patient stay. And now we're going to require that the death happened during the hospitalization. No demographic is required. You notice that this is incomplete at the moment. It's red. We're going to hit update and close. It will then populate. It will populate the condition line. You had CHF during March 2012, age greater than or equal to 65. And there also was a death during that hospitalization. Let's build. We're going to notice that a new cohort is going to appear here. And you notice a new cohort does appear with the name that we chose. And the number of dead are exactly the same. There are 34 people who died. So whether you use the attribute and disposition as we did over here, whether you use the when in command over here, you get the same result. Keep in mind that the admissions that have been picked in the original study, which used only the first condition line, was the first admission during March 2012. When you added the additional condition of death, it may very well be that on the first CHF admission in March, they didn't die, but on the second one they did. So you may be looking at a different admission. You're looking at the same patient, but a different admission. So now you've learned how to use the when in operator, an incredibly powerful operator that can allow you to force the event that you're looking for 
echoes during the hospitalization, first or last creatinine during the hospitalization. You have tremendous control.